looks pretty good. Hey, good. we're live back at the 3D Experience booth at SolidWorks World 2019 in Dallas, Texas. I'm joined here today with Divi. Divi, welcome. Hey, guys. So what are we looking at on these screens here in the, in the 3D Experience booth? Yeah, so what you're looking over here are different X apps that are available on top of 3D Experience platform. So over here you have XRender, then you have XShape, which was announced today morning. Uh, XShape is a new X app which uh, lets you make freeform shapes. And I can just uh, push and pull on you this. You can just push and pull on it. And then what you have on this screen is X Design. So X Design was launched last year and uh, it's going to be commercially available pretty soon. And you can see, you know, you heard the story about uh, Lava Guitar. So people have been using it. So it's a great product, all built on the browser. So one thing I do want to tell about X Design is, and all the X app is that they are all fully built on the browser, which means you can access it from anywhere. Uh, that gives you a lot of flexibility. You can be mobile, you can use your Macintosh. The other thing is they are built on the 3D experience platform. So what that means is that they get all the power of the 3D experience platform like around your data. So you can search the data, you can uh, also manage your data using the collaborative lifecycle management, which I'll show you over here. So uh, like for instance, uh, you know, this particular product is following a, a life cycle and you can see it's in work. And when you are done with uh, completing your model, you can move it to the frozen state and eventually to the release state. I'm also managing my collaborative task. So if I have multiple people working in a collaborative way in completing this design, I can manage all the tasks that they are managing. Uh, so it's a great product. And what you see over here is a simple product uh, for built for kids from four to 14 years of age. It's called App for Kids. Uh, and it's it's our uh, it's our effort to make kids started and interested in uh, unleash their cr creativity in creating their designs. Divi, this is really great stuff. And you had mentioned that all the X apps that we talk about, they're all available seamlessly within the browser. I don't think what some people realize is how easy it is just to get into these apps. If we can bring the camera around here. Every single app that's an X app, I just have to go up to the compass and then I just click on these and I can switch between that's these right. apps, right? Like I that's can go right. from X shape into X design if Correct. I would like Correct. to. So let's say you start with a freeform shape and you build this uh, iron and at some point you want to add more parametric features to it. All you do is open this model in the X design and you can complete your model over there and come back and continue working in X shape. So and it's I can very seamless. go back and forth between You can those. go back and forth. Well, Divi, this is great. We're going to go and take a look at the rest of the booth where we're going to look at how do I get my SolidWorks desktop data into the platform. Excellent. Go All right. Thank, thank you. you. So we saw X apps and how users can quickly access those on a web browser from anywhere on many different devices. The next question that comes to my mind, and I, I want, I'm here with Stephen Endersby. Stephen, thank thanks you. for joining us. Thank you very much. We just looked at X apps, and then the first question that comes to my mind is, well, I start in SolidWorks desktop. I want to start with my traditional SolidWorks files. How do I get them on the 3D Experience platform? So what we've done really, uh, I think, to help our users to connect to the platform is give a, a thing called a SolidWorks connector. So what we have here now is we have our SolidWorks desktop, and we have the 3D Experience uh, connector up there. So can you work out how to connect the two together? I mean. Hopefully it's simple enough that you can work it out. But Yeah, I mean, might. this looks like a lot of the tools that I use inside of SolidWorks. They're in the task pane. Mm -hmm. I see familiar icons, so you mind if I just Go try? So I'm going to assume I, it's a it's a right click here somewhere yep. and save. Save is a good one to go for. And it looks, looks like it's all good here. Oh, it's checking, oh, it's the, checking the files. It's checking the files in. It's, it's moving across quite nicely. And then that's it. All my files are now up on the cloud. Up on the cloud. So really, to be honest, for our users, do they care if it's on the cloud, whether it's on a server in the back room of an office? It really doesn't Actually, matter. a lot of users tell me they don't want to deal with the servers. Absolutely. They want to be able to implement something like this, but don't want that IT overhead. That, and that's really where we're trying to help people do the things they like to do. They want to do the design. They want to do the innovation. They want to solve the problems. Who? Who wants to deal with the PLA? Who wants to deal with the server? That's, that's not interesting work. No, we want not to do the good stuff. So now. So you say, so we save this on the cloud, but I see things like revision and uh, lifecycle state, like in work. Mm -hmm. 
So is this like PDM where I can lock these files so nobody Absolutely. can work on this? So if you wanted to work with something and you wanted to take, so again, it's all on the right mouse click. Right there, on reserve, lock the file. Correct. So basically now you're saying that you're working this. So someone else can go to the server and they'll see these files up there, but they'll know that you're using them. So yes, so they could reference them in their assembly. They could work with them, but they couldn't actually change them. So now this is yours. You can work with it, do what you need to do with it. And when you're happy, you know, save it, release it. Everyone moves forward, revision it do iterations it's a it's a really nice streamlined way of working with the software this is great especially for companies that have people located all across the world now I don't have to worry about replicating a server or anything like that they can just log in into SolidWorks they can grab those files I mean you have friends in the UK I you're do. in Boston you want to share files quickly this seems like a really easy way to do that and and to be honest when you talk to people sharing files is a major headache a major headache and this takes it all away. Yeah, and it looks intelligent. I can see the feature, I can see the assembly structure in there, so it's more than just syncing files. Absolutely, he knows what it is. Great, well thanks Stephen. I think we're going to go take a look at the rest of some of the 3D experience apps. We, we, did you want to go with us I while we went through there? Okay. okay, so not only at SolidWorks World are we talking about SolidWorks products, we're talking about all the pro products available on the 3D experience platform. <laughs> And when I walked past this booth, I saw this Beamy. product here, the yeah. Beamy. So what is this so product? This is a, uh, a, a Bluetooth uh, projection loudspeaker system. So basically, you can connect to your home entertainment system and it's going to show your films on the screen where you want to go. So okay. this was an, an experiment of how can we use the 3D Experience platform to connect design, manufacturing, and all the processes you need to actually go from an idea to a product. Because it's a lot more than just CAD. We have the ideation process, the creation process, Absolutely. the Deep management cast. of the files. Uh, yeah, There's so let's explore the story and see where it starts here. So what we have here is social collaboration services. So this is a really yeah. neat way to basically connect everyone in your organization so they can understand your ideas. So. This isn't a tool that's just for the designer. This is a tool for your, you know, your CEO, your finance officer, anybody who needs to understand the impact of a project on their company, they can get all their information from dashboards, you can find out how things are moving, understand the impact, the design changes. It's a really great way to communicate across your entire organization. And it looks familiar. It looks like uh, almost like a social networking platform in the way that I would interact with this. Indeed it is. I mean, I think it's a, a useful way and gives people a comfortable way to talk. I mean, they understand how these things work, you know, and it is a great way to actually remove the overhead of email. If I send you an email, you forget about it, but if I put a post in the dashboard, it's there. So not only you see it, everybody else in the organization sees it. So it's a really useful way of- Wait, you're gonna hold me accountable now? I might hold you accountable <laughs> for doing the actual work. All right, so what's the next step? So we look at some of the ideation yep. process, sharing ideas, things like that. What do we do next? So now we have to plan it. Now we're at the point that we want to move the thing from the idea and how are we actually going to make sure that this thing's actually move it into production? Okay. So we're going to plan it, when the things are going to go in work, when am I going to order it, when the thing is going to be in schedule and in work. So we're actually going to really understand how the process comes together on the shop floor. So you've got your ideation, you've got the way you want to plan it, and now we've really got the, the skeleton of how the thing can be put together and now once we add the information from our simulation and our design, things slip together in a very seamless way. So it's an acceleration of the process. You plan up front, it makes it so much easier down the line. Okay, so let's go, let's look at the next stage. I think this is the fun stage for a lot of uh, folks. Yeah, this is the stage that a lot of the people in the, in the audience will understand the most, okay? We're doing our gen, we're doing our actual um, design work, and again, this is using the same process we just saw on the on the other booth. Um, I'm connecting all my stuff onto the platform, so all my work. I'm moving things through the the, the, the maturity process, 
So right there, we just went from in work to frozen, and we're making some changes we're now. Making some changes now. So we we basically got our our design. We can see the status of everything, what's released, what's not released. So we can really understand how the the design is progressing. You know, is it is it meeting up production plans? Where are we slipping? All those things we can we can understand from a, a, a much finer detail. Okay, so we fin we design a part, but we always know we want to we want to reduce the amount of material that we're using. We want to make sure that it meets the demands that we're going to put those components through. And this is really one of your areas you really like. Is that correct? What we're yeah, going to look I mean, at? I'm uh, I'm really a, <coughs> a, a simulation guy at heart. Okay? okay. So what we see here is the idea is that when we're doing anything. In, in, in design, you should always check. Design check, design check, design check. And these sorts of things happen all the time. So what we want to do is we want to be able to enable the entire organization just to get the data that they need to do at any particular time and move it into design, make the changes and do some simulation. Um, what we're seeing here is someone searching for some, uh, some componentry. Oh, I think he's going to find something that he needs, hopefully and then move it across inside of uh, SOLIDWORKS. So basically what we would do is we have tools that we can use, we can access them from the 3D Experience platform, bring them into SOLIDWORKS, use either our simulation tools, or in this case, we have 3D Experience platform simulation mm -hmm. tools we would be looking at. Okay. Indeed. So <clears throat> we, move, we take a look at, um, Let's go down. Let's look, let's talk about the manufacturing Indeed. story here. Everyone, so we you have to make something at the end of the day. You wouldn't make something. So. Yeah. So we've designed the mechatronic components. We've looked at simulation. We've looked at managing them. How do we get these parts made? I think this is where um, again, Delmir is a, a, a great tool, and because it's using the same information, we're always using the same information. So. We don't have to wait for design to be finished. So the, the, the manufacturing engineers, the, the, the tool makers, everything can start the, the design process from a very early stage. And you can see here how the different components are needed and are made up. So we can actually really understand which parts need working first, how long things are going to take, so I can actually decide you know, how to stagger my workflows to make sure that at the end of the day, all, All my parts, parts come, come together at the right time in the right place, so I can actually put things together. And we spent some time last night. Uh, oh, great project planning in here. Absolutely, we can do. You can do all your guidance until so you know, in work, in process, things are going to go together perfectly. Great. We spent some time, uh, and for the folks uh, just joining us on the live stream, we have a video last night where we looked at the shop floor tour, where we looked a little bit at Delmia and how uh, in uh, the IQMS stuff and how we can do that. So I've designed my part, I've done the simulation, I've looked at the process of getting those parts made. It's time to go to market. Absolutely. So again, the next step is you actually have to sell your product. And again, 3 Experience Platform is a great tool to enable you to reach your customers. So in terms of configurability, personalization, all these sorts of things, you can actually enable the customer to understand, to make, so it's not going to be your beam, it's going to be my beam, it's going to have That's my right. personal things. So I think this is really where these tools, because we're, again, we're using the same data, everything flows through, so any changes that are made are seen immediately, and it's a, and it's a fantastic way to design from, from art to part. Okay, so I've bought my part, you've bought your Beamy. I bought my Beamy. And it breaks. You need a replacement part, warranty. You need a warranty replacement, right? So what do we do now? So really now we're looking to see and understand that we are getting feedback all the time from the, the product itself. Okay. And Yes, we're going to service your part has broken and we can find the part and replace it for you. But we want to feed that information back to myself as maybe the designer. That you know what, maybe that part was a little bit too thin or maybe the material wasn't quite right. So we're going to get all this information, this, this information and feed it back to the designer such that he can make BME 3 or BME 4 to be right. better and better. Because if I don't know as a designer, where the problems are, 
I, I, I make the best product I can. Right. So if you give me more information, I can make it better for you. Well, yeah, maybe it wasn't you, maybe it was an electrical engineer or something yes, like that. Yes, probably right? was an electrical engineer, never, <laughs> never a mechanical engineer. All right, so basically what we're seeing with these tools, though, is the ability to tr track the performance of these products over their lifespan yes. uh, and, and how to handle those products. Yeah. All right, well, I think we have one more station. It's going to be a bit of a walk. We wanted okay. to take a look at uh, uh, Delmia Works IQMS. We looked a, bit, a little bit at it yesterday, mm -hmm. and I think we want to take another peek. We're going to, we're going to squeeze through a small opening here. Ooh. I'll let you go through first. If we can wiggle our way through. Here we go. And this morning we actually talked about this a little bit. This is a, was a big announcement that we made this morning. Uh, how you doing? I'm Jeremy, Mark. So what we're doing is we're taking a look at what is, the, what is IQMS and what does this mean for SolidWorks customers who are watching us live at home. All right, yeah. so what this means for SolidWorks customers is you can take the design that you've made in SolidWorks, bring it right into IQMS for the, the, the planning, the procurement and the execution, manufacturing of the, of the product and, and ultimate delivery to the uh, customer. This sounds good. And we, again, I uh, mentioned this a little bit ago. If you haven't seen it on a live stream, go back. We looked at the whole shop floor experience. They were managing all those parts being manufactured back there with the IQMS solution exactly as well. exactly correct, yeah. So there you have it. The, we taken our tour through the 3D Experience booth. Steven, I want to say thank you so thank much you, for spending time going through with us. Mark, thank you so much for My taking pleasure. a few minutes to talk to us. Stay tuned. We're going to be coming to you live for the rest of the day uh, with lots more sessions where we're going to be going through the partner pavilion here. So stay, uh, like us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, or stay logged into the SolidWorks World app. Until next time, we'll talk to you later.